Good evening, Sishero Community Church. This is another wonderful day, another great opportunity to study God's Word together. We are going to look at Philemon today. Finally, we finished our study into the book of Colossians. This is another great opportunity to look into God's Word as we continue another letter that Apostle Paul wrote while he was still writing to Colossian believers. Remember, in Philemon, we haven't moved out of Colossae. We are still in Colossae. Because, as you will see in our introduction today, Philemon is a man that stays in Colossae. But right now, I want us to, I want to remind you to go and have a look at God's word uh, in where Murutu was reading about where he taught us on Sunday about presenting God's word carefully and rightly handling God's word. Murutu reminded us that as he showed us a picture of from Job chapter 42, those friends of his that keep interpreting things that are happening in Job's life as if they understand what was going on. So without understanding, it is unwise to, to present God's word. So that's what Murutu was teaching us on, on Sunday. Today, we are now continuing to a journey to look at another book another book. If you are not with us from the beginning, I highly recommend you starting to look at our topic, our study on how to study the Bible. That's where we started. How to study the Bible, the 12 principles of how to study the Bible. Start with that. And then if you have time, go and look at how we studied Colossians from chapter one until chapter four. We studied that based on the principles we learned on how to study the Bible. Today, we are continuing the same study, but we are now studying the book of Philemon. In Philemon, please open your Bibles to Philemon. Philemon is just after Hebrew, just after Titus. If you don't know, please go there, or you can go to Hebrews and just go back a little bit. Then you'll find Philemon right there. It's only one chapter, and this is, Today we're just doing an introduction to Philemon. Let's read it so that we enter into prayer and then we start describing the scene of Hebrews. We're going to read only the first seven verses of Philemon. Let's read it and then we will pray. Philemon chapter 1, well the only chapter and then first seven verses. Let's read it together. Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother. To Philemon, our beloved fellow worker, and Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and the church in your house, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. That is the reading of God's word for today. Let's pray. 
Lord, we come to your throne of grace and we thank you. Your word is true. Your word is sharper than any double-edged double sword. Lord, we come to your throne of grace with a humble attitude to learn from your word. Help us, Lord, to understand and implement what we are learning. In Jesus' name, amen. Here is the background of what was just happening as we were reading. We met already some of the people that are mentioned in the introduction here. Paul, we have met. He's the one who's writing. He's Apostle Paul. He's the Apostle to the Gentiles, chosen by Jesus Christ as he was still persecuting Christians. And then he is here writing as a prisoner. Remember when we were reading Colossians? He was reading, he was writing that letter. He wrote Colossians, a letter to the believers in Colossians and, and the Colossae. And the letter to Philippians, Maruti went through the whole book of Philippians in our study. And I recommend that you go back to that material. It's very beneficial. And then he also, Apostle Paul wrote the book of Ephesians as well. And this letter. So he wrote Colossae, Philippians, Ephesians, and Philemon, while he was from different places in different prisons, because he was arrested not once, but a couple of times. That's why theologians will debate whether which prison was he at, whether he was in house, house arrest, or he was in the dungeon, dirty dungeon of Rome, where the, it was a prison where the sewerage of Rome was passing through. Was he there or was he in house arrest? That's a debate for theologians. But for us, we will continue to derive from this text things that we need to learn. And then we meet somebody else there. We meet Timothy. Timothy was with Paul when he was writing this letter. And not only that, he was addressing the letter to an individual named Philemon. Philemon, many would say, is a well-off man because his house was big enough for it to be a gathering place for the believers in Colossae. Believers in Colossae, were, in Colossae were going to Philemon's house every Lord's Day to fellowship. And we see that in, in verse 2 where it says, I greet the church in your house. And then we also meet Aphia. Many believe that Aphia is Philemon's wife. And Archippus, we met Archippus at the end of the book of Colossians. Remember, Archippus is the one Apostle Paul was saying he must remember his call to ministry. He must do that which he is called to do. A call that is unmistakably the same, similar to his call to Timothy to remember and to stir up the gift that the Lord has given him. So that is the intro of the people mentioned in the first seven verses. You'll see also that Onesimus, we met Onesimus as well, because Onesimus is traveling 
Let's go to Colossians chapter 4, and then you'll see Onesimus there. Verse, verse 7 until verse 9. Then you'll see how we marry these two together. Colossians and Philemon. When you read Colossians chapter 7, I mean chapter 4, because there's no chapter 7, chapter 4, verse 7, until verse 9, it reads like this. Tychicus will tell you all about my activities. So this is Tychicus, the man that Apostle was sending with the letter to the Colossian believers. Right. He is, <clears throat> he is a beloved brother and a faithful minister and a fellow servant in the Lord. Verse 8, I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage your hearts. Listen to verse 9. That's where we meet our guy. And with him, there is Onesimus. Colossians chapter 4, verse 9. And listen to what he says about Onesimus. He is a faithful and beloved brother who is one of you. So he's a member of the Colossian uh, church. That's why he says he's one of you. They will tell you of everything that has taken place. So Onesimus is traveling with Tychicus from Rome, carrying the letter to the Colossians, the letter to the Laodiceans, and the letter to Philemon. And guess who Philemon is to Onesimus? To Onesimus, Philemon is the master, and Onesimus is the slave. At the time he was a slave to Philemon, before these letters were written, Onesimus was an unbelieving slave who did Onesimus, who did Philemon wrong. He wronged him, he stole from him, and he ran away. So he's a runaway slave. He ran away from Philemon and he went to Rome. Somewhere along the line where we don't see, where the Bible is silent, Onesimus met with Apostle Paul, and Apostle Paul preached the gospel of salvation to him, and he became a brother. He became a believer. He became a disciple of Jesus Christ during the ministry of Apostle Paul while in prison. Now that you have that background, you can see, now, Apostle Paul wrote this letter, intentionally sending Onesimus with Tychicus to Philemon, so that Philemon can forgive and restore Onesimus back in his service. This is the main point of the letter. And in the first seven verses where we read, it is Apostle Paul introducing himself and who he is with to Philemon and to his family and to the church. And he's addressing certain things about Philemon's character, about his demeanor, about who he is. And we are going to see the set up for this. In this study, for however long it will take for us to look at this, I want us to start today to look at three things that make a person be able to forgive others, especially those who grievously wronged you and they repented and they are asking for forgiveness. I remember we covered this in one of our Bible studies in, I think, towards the end of last year, 
the issue of forgiveness. This whole book of Philemon, it's about forgiveness. And we are going to talk today about the three things that make it possible for one to forgive others. From the text, we are going to follow the text to get these three things from there about Philemon, what kind of a person he is. And because of that, that's how we need to align ourselves with that kind of character. Because you'll see why. Because this character is also the character of Jesus Christ. And then he says, grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 4. I thank God always when I remember you in my prayers. Verse 5. Because I hear of your love and of the faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus and for all the saints. Pause right there. He mentions two things here. He hears there's a reputation about Philemon. He hears of two things about him. His love and faith. Love for Christ. Love for the believers. And his faith. His trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And his faith towards those who also believe in Jesus Christ. Now, those are the two characteristics that are paramount to a person to enable you to forgive others. Without love and faith, it is going to be very difficult for you to forgive because in the place of love, there is hatred. That's the direct opposite of love. And in the place of faith, then we have vengeance because you don't trust that God will avenge for you. That's why you want to do vengeance for yourself. So that is the opposite of faith. And then the opposite of love is definitely hatred or resentment. When you have, when you don't have love and faith, then you would definitely have hatred and vengeance. You'd want to make sure you you come up with your own solution. You come up with your own punishment towards the person who wronged you. But when you have love for Christ and love for the saints, you will be able to forgive. And when you have faith in Jesus Christ, his finished work and his avengeance for your enemies, and you trust him to handle that, then when somebody comes back to you and says, I am so sorry, I wronged you, you will be able to forgive them. That is a recipe for forgiveness. Look at the third one. Let's go together. Let's follow the text. Philemon, let's look at verse 6. He says there, And I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. And then verse 7. For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Now listen to this carefully. This is the third, third res, res, uh, recipe. In our recipe for forgiveness, this is the third ingredient. The third ingredient is loving and sharing with the community of believers. And where is the community of believers? It is the church. 
the body of Christ. So, number one, the ingredients, the three ingredients that make a person be able to forgive others is love and faith. Remember, is loving Christ and loving those who trust in Christ as well and loving people. And then putting your trust, your faith in Christ as well and your faith in fellow believers in their sanctification. And then number three, it is sharing that love and faith in the community of believers, making sure that they are refreshed by your faithfulness and your love and your kindness. You see that in verse 6 and 7. Listen to verse 6. In verse 6 it says there, the sharing of your faith. You see that? So it is known that Philemon shares his belief, his faith with others. So in this context, faith would be Because it's something you have to share. Now, he's sharing the doctrines, the lessons, the gospel. The reason for his hope. The reason for him to believe in Christ. He's sharing that. So, he's praying that your sharing may be effective. So that... Those who he's sharing with and himself as he's sharing, they all may come collectively together to the full knowledge of every good thing. And guess what? For the sake of who? For, For the sake of Jesus Christ. Everything good that is in Christ in us. Christ who is in us. And then, Verse 7, let's dissect it together. For I have derived much joy. So Apostle Paul himself is deriving joy, and not only him, but the hearts of others. So in order for you to develop a character that is filled with love, filled with, with faith and trusting in the Lord, Guess where you need to do it? Practically live this out in a company of those who believe. You need to hang around other believers so that you practice these two important traits, important virtues. Because you bounce off each other And comfort, you see, he finds comfort from the love of Philemon. Paul finds comfort from the love that Philemon shares. Remember, when you share the gospel, that is sharing love. When you share food, when you eat together in fellowship, when you do communion together that is fellowship and that is showing love brotherly love and not only that when you visit one another praying with one another having those prayer books remember i spoke about them that every prayer request you receive you write it down and you pray formally daily regularly for those people They asked you, because remember James chapter 4 verse 16 clearly says, The prayer of the just availeth much. Now, that is why we need to pray for one another. This whole thing is a prayer, by the way. Because in verse 4 he says, I thank God always when I remember you in my prayers. And what does he remember in the prayers and how, what does he pray for? He prays for all of these three important traits that we need. So in conclusion of today's introductory message into our study of Philemon, 
is that Philemon's character shows how Christ was. Christ, without his love, Christ loved us. Remember, while we were still sinners, he died for us out of his love. Remember John chapter 3 verse 16. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son. So that is love. He loved and then took a leap of faith to give his only begotten son. And Christ didn't end there. His love was sacrificial love. It was love for the benefit of others. So like you and I, we need to learn that. Philemon learned that. And Apostle Paul prays for Philemon to develop that in the community of believers. Rather than to feed hatred, resentment. Let's not feed that. Let's starve that. Because that is the opposite. With hatred, you, you can't forgive. With bitterness, resentfulness, you can forgive. With the, with the lack of faith in Christ and believing in your own penal, judgmental self that wants punishment for the wrong that is done against you. If you have vengeance attitude, ask him for revenge for yourself. It is going to be difficult. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, it says there that faith works through love. And that's how he ties it together here. So two main characteristics. You need to love Christ. And remember what Christ said about love. He said, if you love me, you will do my commandments. So if you love Christ, you live according to what he requires out of you. You live according to his commandments. And his commandments are in his word. That's number one. Number one, have love for Christ and your love for Christ will show in your love for believers, for others. Number two, have faith. Trust in Jesus Christ, not in yourself. Don't believe in yourself. Believe in Jesus Christ. Trust in Christ. Then, with your faith in Christ and Christ is in all and in all and for all, then those who believe in him, then you'll have faith in them as they are going through their sanctification process. You don't give up on each other. And then finally, practice these things in sharing and comforting other believers in the body of Christ. Exercising your gifts, serving one another, comforting one another, visiting one another, praying for one another. That's how to develop these three traits. Next week, we will, God willing, look at the ingredients now of forgiveness itself. The ingredients of forgiveness itself. I wouldn't be, this wouldn't be done if I don't urge you. If you are a Christian already, I ask you, live this out in humility with people you stay with. Start there behind closed doors where nobody sees you. And then practice it in the church. Which means you need to belong to a local assembly of believers. 
You cannot do this in the comfort of your home looking, uh, looking at the online church. No, you need to practice this with physical people meeting with them. You need to go to church. Remember Apostle Paul in another letter, he wrote that do not be used or do not get used to not fellowshipping with other believers as others are getting used to. Let's not do that. Practice that love and faith in the company of those who believe in Jesus Christ as well. You move away from that, you disassociate yourself from other believers or from a church that teaches the word of God, not that teaches dreams and other things, but the one that teaches the word of God. If you move away from that, then you are moving closer and closer to unbelief. And from unbelief is condemnation, vengeance, hatred, and you will live with guilt continuously. And you'll try to drown that guilt by drinking or by being promiscuous in your lifestyle, trying to drown the guilt that is inside you. Because remember, you are created to worship God. When you do not worship God the way he wants you to worship him, then you will have a void that will never be filled inside you. Now I'm talking to you if you haven't believed in Christ yet. I urge you, my brother, my sister, my mother, my father, turn from that lifestyle of trying to come to fill in a gap that can only be filled by worshipping your maker, your creator. In all of us, there is that space. Repent, humble yourself, and trust in Jesus Christ. That gap will be filled with love, joy, comfort, peace, kindness, and faith. Let's pray. Lord, we come to your throne of grace and we thank you for your word. Thank you for today. Help us, Lord, as we are learning from the traits that Philemon had that were known in the Colossian assembly and known by Apostle Paul. Help us, Lord, to also develop those traits for they are traits that you have, our Lord. And our aim as Christians is to be like you. Help us to live in our pro progressive sanctification as you are cleansing us, Lord. Help us to transform form into being like you with love, faith, and love of fellowship for encouraging others as we humbly receive encouragement. Some of us, Lord, we still don't get this. Have mercy upon us as sinners to repent. Have mercy on us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.